Yeah. When you go into that interval, in that interval there is no time and there is no mind. So you cannot even say the words. If you say something, you've already come to the mind. If you are repeating to yourself, there is time here, you are already out of it and into the mind. In the interval between two arisings, it's absolutely still. There's a stillness of thought. There might be perception, like for example, you're watching a beautiful sunset and you're like, do you see what I'm saying? Something stops. You move into that stillness between two perceptions of the same sunset. In that stillness, there are no thoughts. In that stillness, there is no time. The moment you come out of that stillness, then you say, wow, so beautiful. This is so amazing. All the words that you formulate, you formulate after coming out of that interval. Yes? So, I want you to become very, very um, aware of this interval between thoughts, interval between two arisings. Only if you become clear will you understand the next chapter. The, the, the next chapter is going to go over your head. It's just going to be words. Pointless. Yeah. So, practice this more. It's not even practice. For lack of words, I am using the word practice. It's not practice. It's exploring my own self. My entire 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years of my life, I have been exploring the external world. I was so interested in external people, situations and things. With a turn of events, I have started exploring myself now. So I'm just exploring myself. It's a self-investigation, a self-exploration. So let's not call it practice. Yeah. Just recognizing what is. I did not manufacture the interval between two arisings. It's always been there. I was just not aware enough before. I was not interested in this direction. I was always interested outside. Now that I've become interested, let me explore this fully. The next chapter is based on the assumption that you understand the interval between two arisings. Do you get it? Yeah. Obviously, I'm not expecting you to be able to formulate fantastic sermons on the interval between two arisings. No, no. You just recognize that in that gap there is this silence i hit my nature i am that pure consciousness i am happiness and i don't recognize all this when i'm in the gap i obviously come out of the gap and then i formulate these words or this as a sense of understanding yeah in the gap there is absolute silence and even if you experience it for one second Please pat yourself on the back. You have to just recognize that that's where I go again and again and again. Yeah. Last week I just explained that in between two arisings, you go to the gap. Right? I take you one step deeper. Till now, your understanding was there is thought, 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 like a train which is running very fast. Lots of thoughts, sensations, ideas, feelings, concepts, running, 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 running. And somewhere you see a slowing down and you recognize the interval between two thoughts and you feel, ah, there, that is my nature. I'm telling you to go one step ahead and reverse this and see. It is not that there are thoughts, thoughts, thoughts and in between two thoughts there is the interval where you recognize your pure nature. It is actually an ocean of awareness. 
a quiet space of awareness in which one thought arises disturbing that awareness and it goes away. Another sensation arises, it disturbs that awareness and it goes away. Another perception arises, it disturbs that awareness and it goes away. Yeah, we have to reverse it instead of seeing the train of thoughts and the gap or the interval between the th between the two compartments of this train. See it the other way around. There is an awareness, a background of awareness, and there is just one arising that arises and fades away, another that arises and fades away. And another that arises and fades away. Yeah? If meditation helps slow down your mind, do meditation. Yeah? If mantra does it, do mantra. It's okay. Knowingly, I am being the body now. I am taking the stand of the body now and doing this breath or this mantra. Yeah? And can I shift to the stand of the awareness and notice the breath or the mantra? And then the mind will slow down and then see, can I explore what Ekta was explaining? That it is a silent background of awareness which gets disturbed by the arising of a thought. Which gets disturbed by the arising of a perception. Which gets disturbed by the arising of a sensation. Yes, only if you understand this can we move ahead. Otherwise, you're going to hit the glass ceiling. Yeah, in the corporate world, glass ceiling is that you can't move on to higher management. No, just like that. In the spiritual world, the glass ceiling does not let you move on to higher Advaita. Make that effort. That is why I have shared the Nisargadatta playlist. Every day do one meditation, calm the mind down and then with a calm mind see can I recognize this background of awareness in which there is just arising that comes and goes. You know what Atmananda says? He says every moment to moment you go back to your awareness because your awareness is that blue background. It's huge. It's always there. That is your nature. In that only there is an arising and it goes away. In that only there is another arising and it goes away. Means what? I am moment to moment touching my nature. Otherwise you cannot survive a 16 to 18 hour waking day. Impossible. And why is it impossible? Because of borrowed consciousness. I've explained this before. What is borrowed consciousness? Chitta chaya. You borrow your consciousness during the deep sleep state. In the deep sleep state, what is happening? Your body and mind is getting recharged. Yeah, And this is a different kind of device. It doesn't work while it's charging. That is why in deep sleep state, you do not remember anything. You do not have any memory of deep sleep state. Yeah? It's a special device. While charging, it does not work. Yeah? When the charge is done, yeah, then you have these hazy kind of, it's starting up. How your computer is starting up? It's not clearly started up. Then you have these hazy kind of dreams, hazy arisings, which are not very clear. You cannot see anything. Yeah, a hazy arising and then slowly you move into your waking state where you are completely charged. But remember, it is borrowed consciousness. It is not something that you own. You borrow money from the bank. That money is going to last only a certain amount of time. At the end of the time, you are going to exhaust that borrowed money. You can borrow consciousness at the body and the mind level only for 16 to 18 to 20 hours. Yeah, after that, it's like 
लो बैटरी लो बैटरी अलर्ट अलर्ट यू नीड टू स्लीप डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सो बिकॉज ऑफ बोरोड कॉन्शियसनेस द माइंड कैन नॉट रियली फंक्शन ऑन इट्स ओन ऑल द टाइम दीज थॉट्स दैट अराइज एंड फॉल अराइज एंड फॉल देर हैज टू बी दैट इंटरवल वेर आई गो बैक टू माई नेचर There has to be that interval. So Atmananda says, recognize these intervals. In fact, they are not intervals of me going to the nature. It's the other way around. The intervals are of thoughts and perceptions and arisings. Most of the time, you are your nature, consciousness, awareness, witness. the mistake that most of the people on the spiritual path make is they confuse awareness with alertness of the mind alertness of the mind is looking through the peep hole awareness is like that flood light which is beyond yeah we are not doing any spotlight we are the flood light the awareness is the flood light so recognize that you are the flood light this is possible to recognize experientially this is not theory if you do it as theory you will not be able to proceed forward very clear